welcome to Telling the Tale. It's the podcast in which we will go through every single Telltale Games game. I'm your host, Mitchell Farley-Wolf. I'm joined, as always, by Dustin Cornelius Jackson. Hello, it's me, Dustin Cornelius Jackson here. I'm here with my co-host, Mitchell Cornelius Wolf. Mm -hmm. And today we're going to be playing uh, The Expanse, a Telltale series Archangel bonus episode, directed by Stephen Frost, designed by... um, Many people, but led in design by Christopher Sika, and uh, the narrative was led by Jonathan Zimmerman, released on November 3rd, 2023, although that date seems a little weird for some people, depending (laughs) on if they got, well, we'll talk about this, but if they bought the pre-order bonus or not, uh, they might have gotten a one-day early access, but maybe not. You know, yeah. Maybe, maybe for some people that didn't work out a- at all. But uh, that's the episode today. It's the bonus episode, the secret episode six of the Expanse. It's something that, as we were mapping out the future of the show, I think we kind of forgot th- that was going to happen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, we didn't know when it was going to happen either. No, it was. Uh, it was shadow dropped. Yeah. Yeah, they didn't have a release date for it, and then they just said it was out. What a what a way to do it, you know? I think for this, that's probably a pretty good move. It it worked fine. It worked yeah. out for us, mm-hmm. kind of. I think so. Uh, so the uh the synopsis for this episode, we don't usually do this, but I saw it, so I wrote it down. A consequential day in the life of Christian Avasarala. The most powerful person on Earth. Pretty good synopsis, I think. Want want to know something so crazy, Mitchell? Hmm. I also wrote that synopsis down. Why? Why do you think we both did that? I don't know. It just makes it easier to keep a tab on where things are going, I guess. Yeah, but we'd never do that. So That's true. How did, why did we both do it this we, time? <laughs> we both did it this time after never doing it. I guess it's just a, a, a good synopsis. Uh, gives well, you just think... a little taste. Oh, the most powerful person on Earth. I, yeah. I think another reason is this is pretty disconnected from, like, the main story, so it kind of helps us get our bearings. Yeah. Um, this might be considered, in television terms, a bottle episode. Um, the character is locked in a room basically the whole time. The episode starts when she enters the room and ends when she leaves it. And uh, that makes it I imagine, easier to develop than a lot of the other episodes of this game. Less environments you have to make. Fewer environments you have to make. The environment that you do have to make is very sleek and uh, under uh, undercomplicated, I suppose. Yeah. Very um, few character models you're interacting with. Yep. Yeah. Very few characters in general. Yeah. Yeah. Um... I do I do want to ask you how you felt about it. But before we get going, I think we should talk about what we were talking about before with the pre-order bonus situation thing. That's a good idea. Okay, so both of us, both you, Dustin, and I, myself, bought the Digital Deluxe Edition of The Expanse. And we bought it as a pre-order before the episodes even started coming out. Right, right. And we did that in for two reasons. One... Uh, if you pre-ordered it, you get the episodes a day in advance, which I don't think really actually mattered, but the idea was it was going to help us with our schedule for recording right, the show. Yeah, um, yeah, I think maybe it helps one week. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the other one was, if you get the deluxe edition, which was five bucks more, um, you'll get the bonus episode free of charge. Where it would normally be like six or seven bucks, um, so it nor it worked as intended for you. Yeah, it it just it just kind of worked out, but uh, for you it was a different story. For me, it uh, yeah, it did the exact opposite. Oh, it man. didn't work out. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was a it was a problematic situation. At first, I was given a link. Just like on the add-ons page for the game. Uh, hey, it's free. You know, just download it. Uh, so I pressed it, and then it said something went wrong. Like, immediately. Couldn't connect to the servers. So I, I tried troubleshooting it. Like, okay, 
is this can't connect to the servers thing a problem with other stuff or is it isolated to this game it is sometimes a problem with other stuff and when it is you can fix it by like deleting the card like the payment card that's on your profile and then re-entering it again or or doing some weird other stuff and what that did was it made the uh price of the game go from free to six dollars and i was thinking well this is lame this is lame dot claim because i i paid not for it but i did pay money for something right um, that should be attached to it so i went through my transaction history on playstation found the fact that i did in fact buy the deluxe edition of the game it says it in there um but it looks like they've deleted the deluxe edition from the P- uh from the PlayStation shop so oh weird if you do what I did when you're tr- when I was troubleshooting that error code that I got, which is to press the restore licenses button. If for some reason something that you should have access to, um, it's not giving you access to it, you can press restore licenses. It like refreshes what it thinks you are uh, are owed. So I did that, and I think it refreshed to just the base version of the game. So I had to spend six Ooh. additional dollars, even though I, I bought the game. That sucks so bad, Mitchell. I'm so sorry. Yeah, and because, uh, you know, we record on the weekends, and because this was shadow dropped on a Friday, um, I didn't really have any chance to, like, talk to a PlayStation representative. Right. Uh, because I, I called them, and they are like, we don't even exist on the weekends. People shouldn't <laughs> play PlayStation on weekends. That that's true. That's outside of PlayStation hours. Yeah, I don't. I don't even know if Sean Layden wakes up for Saturdays. I don't. <laughs> I don't think Sean Layden is involved anymore. He hasn't been there for a while. Uh, sorry, sorry, Shawnee. Uh, but yeah, so that was lame. Yeah that that sounds like a. I can I can tell you this much right now. If if that had happened to me, I would not be uh the jolly the jolly man you're talking to today. Yeah, I'm. Uh... But I, it, yeah. it still puts me in a. It still puts me in a. Well, you shouldn't have done that to my friend Mitchell. That's not cool. I feel that way about myself. Yeah. Yeah. You shouldn't have done that to me. <laughs> You've made a vocal enemy. I don't know yeah, whose I'm... fault it is. It it might be Telltale's. It might be PlayStation's. It's someone's. Yeah. You you weren't counting on having an enemy with a podcast, now were you? Now everyone's <laughs> gonna know. Um, yeah, but yeah, if that's your situation as well, um, I would go check on your thing to make sure you own it. You might not. Yeah. Yeah. I I don't know. I don't know if I can really muster that strong of an emotion about it because I'll probably just call PlayStation. They'll ask me why I bought it if they, if I knew I was just going to get it sorted with them later. And I said, I will tell them because they don't work on the weekends and then they will probably get it sorted out. I imagine that is what I hope will happen. And Hopefully. because I I think that is the case, I'm not that mad about it. And I'm also not okay, that mad okay. about it because I really liked this episode. Oh, interesting. I thought it was boring. Okay. <laughs> well, here, okay, okay. Good. <laughs> okay. I thought it was boring up to a point in where it started getting like I started enjoying it a lot more in a very small amount of time. You thought it was boring. I thought it was pretty boring. I just wasn't into uh, uh, much of it. Yeah, I I think I'm forgiving parts of that because it is such a like conceptual piece compared to every other episode of The Expanse. It's uh, it's it's a standalone story. You are in, and you've seen all of it within an hour, um, or so. Was it about an hour for you? Yeah, about there. Yeah, uh, I think I think that's the thing. Like, I wasn't that interested in it, but it's not like it was a huge waste of my time or anything. Yeah, would you pay six bucks for it? No, I, I would. I, if if I had the same situation you did, and I had to pay another six bucks for this, I would have been uh, pretty upset. Yeah. Um... Well, because I was going to get a burrito for lunch, and I told you about this. 
But then I decided, well, let's save some money because I was just stolen from. Uh, <laughs> so let me uh, let me just eat a bowl of cereal for lunch instead. And right. the burrito I was going to eat was probably like 12 bucks. And they only stole $6. So net positive. I guess. Yeah. I, I guess that is a way you can look at the situation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they gave me six bucks. <laughs> well, uh, and also... <laughs> My cereal was not free. I did buy the cereal and milk. Um, yeah. But so, I don't know if that adds up to $6 for a bowl. It's it's just one of those situations, you know? You got to be really careful if you find yourself in a situation. Yeah. If, if, you're, if you find yourself in a situation, who knows what could happen. But I'm glad you're feeling not that bad about it. Now, fictional character Christian Avasarala, she definitely found herself in a situation. What a yeah, segue. You know... <laughs> You you know what if if we're comparing the situations I think she might her situation might be a little more understandably stressful than yours. Yeah, so high level here's what this episode is. Uh Christian Avasarolo, by the way, I did practice saying her name. <laughs> uh she is the undersecretary to like the major secretary of the UN. And in the world of the expanse, the UN actually matters. They're kind of the main player on earth. Right. Um, so her being like the undersecretary, one of the undersecretaries, um, makes her like vice president of the whole world, essentially. Right. Uh, so all of the other, and there's multiple vice presidents of the world, there's multiple undersecretaries, but the secretary general and many of the other undersecretaries all went to Luna, the moon. They went to the moon. Uh, they have to call it Luna because there's a bunch of moons that they go to now. There's a whole to ton of moons out some, there. Some Jupiter moons, some Saturn moons. Um, yeah, you can't just say, oh, I'm going to the moon. They won't know which one. It's like, oh, yeah. Could you be more specific? Are you going to go to Ganymede or Juno or Titan? <laughs> no, I'm probably going to go to Luna. So they all went to Luna. Uh, so in their absence... Christian Avasarala, who I will only call Avasarala because it is fun to say, uh, she's now the most powerful person on Earth. But there is a security breach in the Secretary General's like palace or whatever. Um, right. So she's ushered down into this bunker where she has her computer and her um, her fun things, her her personal items have been shipped there for her, uh, but she can't leave. And everything that she needs to do as part of her job is just done remotely. Right. And, and uh, making it more complicated is there's a big vote uh, to shake up the council today. Yeah, there's like, okay, so there's like four or five pieces of interest that are going on a around this uh this moment one is the actual uh security threat in the building which she thinks is fake and i think is we, yeah. we don't actually know i think by the end but uh the implication is that one of her political uh enemies just set it up right to to lock her out of the vote because right. she has to stay in this room yeah um so so that's that's one thing. It's a security threat. Second is exactly what you said. It's um there's this guy Mendez who's a a high-ranking senator of some sort who thinks that in a situation like this the power should be diverted to a committee instead of just someone inheriting the secretary general's situation. So he's trying to put it to a vote right now to just Strip Avasarala of all her power. We're playing as her, so we don't want that. Yeah. I think it might actually not be a, that bad of an idea, <laughs> frankly. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, so we're, we're going to try to stop that. So he's putting it to a vote. Also, there's this um, naval, o there's this earthling naval officer who's just out there in the belt. Uh, and he's watching a, like, a Martian ship. And he's just sending messages to Avasarala being like, 
Give I'm going to attack them. Give me permission to attack the ship. They don't, they're not doing anything <laughs> right now. But we want to attack. They could do anything at any second. Anything could happen always. So let's just, <laughs> let's just assume it already did and let me attack them. <laughs> <laughs> so that's happening. And also, uh, her son, uh, uh, Sharon Paul Babasarala, he has found this woman he likes, and she is a belter activist, which is, of course, you know, that's going to be uh, bad political tidings for her. Right. So, uh, Christian, in, in that situation, is just, like, very against the the whole idea of uh, <laughs> him finding love at all, <laughs> really. Right. Uh, not in a cool way. She's pretty <laughs> controlling about it. Yeah, and um, she's saying you don't got time for this. You got to be doing important stuff. And also during all of that, uh, she is playing a game of remote chess with her uh, her hubby of of some sort, her love interest. That's fun. Yeah. So that's that. You need to manage doing all of those things uh, while you're in there, separated from the whole rest of the world. Right. You don't like a lot that. of you, things. You think to, a lot of things. Uh, I don't know. None of them like super grabbed me that much. I guess the stuff with her son was a little interesting, but it's not like you get that much to sink your teeth into. Yeah. Um. So, okay. Here, here's a. Here, here's why I like this. I, I like it because. Okay. Uh, you, we're really, we're both really stuffy today. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that, everybody. Sorry, listeners. You wanted a good Just kind podcast. Of a stuffy day. Go next door to cereal. Yeah. Sorry. Um, I had a Ooh, bowl of cereal today you? as well, and I think maybe the oh. milk is is making me a little stuffy. I get you. I get you. You get that dairy stuffiness. Uh I, mean, I don't think so. I I don't know if I have. You don't need to make it up to relate to me. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, uh, it, it, it's so many things that just, like, give a lot of opportunities to get inside the mind of this character. And this character is someone I had seen on the show. Um, she's played by a, a very wonderful actress. I forget her name, but uh, she's got such a distinctive voice. Right. A very, like, low, raspy voice. Um, and... Just has, like, a, a lot of interesting little personality quirks that go back and forth, kind of, between, like, oh, I think you're a, you're generally a pretty good person, trying to make the world a better place with your position of power, and then on the other hand, like, oh, m maybe you're not even seeing how much you are just attached to the idea of power here. Uh, right. Very, very interesting character to me. And, um, like, one of the things in the room that you can mess with is a prayer rug where you can either do silent meditation or prayer um it, it's a lot of opportunities to get her to be the person that she is in a very strong and interesting way in a very small footprint in a, in a very compact space in a very compact amount of time um and i i think she shows off really well like one of the things she needs to do in order to settle the vote right uh so right. the vote about taking the powers away from her. She needs three more votes than she thinks she's going to get naturally. So she can talk to five people and hear all of their requests and demands. And based on that, you need to like solve the puzzle of, okay, here's what I should do with taxes. Here's what I should do with uh, spaceport regulation. Here, should I make this new water tower or not? Because all of these people that she wants the votes from, she are going to conflict. Um, and... Yeah. You just need to find a way to get three of those votes. Yeah, you just need to find a way to get three of those votes. And it's it's interesting because, like, some of the things that some of the votes ask for are so reasonable. They're like, hey, can I... The moon needs a water tower so the people there can drink water. Uh, and like, well, that sounds reasonable, but I gotta hear these other people out, too. Um, and, like, in the way they explain what they want... I think it's very clear, like, oh, from a morality perspective, we should build this water tower, and we should pr 
probably keep regulating the spaceports. You can read a little bit more about the spaceports on this like uh, holographic projection of the solar system where you can uh, zoom into different parts and, and uh, get a little bio of different stuff. Yeah. So you want to build a water tower. You want to regulate the spaceports, both of which do require a little bit of raising taxes. But then you realize there's no way to get three if you do that. There's no way to get three votes. You have to deregulate the spaceports. Um, you have to not build the water tower and you have to not raise taxes in order to get yeah. three people. Um, it's the only you know way what, that it puzzles it, together. You know what makes it very easy to do this? Uh, usually in Telltale games, I'm used to being held accountable for my actions mm -hmm. and made to feel bad if I screw someone over. Here, you don't have to worry about that. If you get the votes, you're good. You don't have to talk to any of these people. Yeah. You yeah. just get what you want. Especially, like, one of the voters is, uh, <laughs> she says, listen, I'll throw you my vote, but um, you have to not build a water tower on the moon. <laughs> <laughs> because the, the governor of the moon is going to be, like, really shitty about it. Yeah, it's, it's, just, it's just a matter of... Uh, ego it's yeah. like this would be a, it's like these people need this water tower but we'll just never hear the end of it if they get that water tower so just you just don't yeah just just don't she'll be so annoying if she builds a water tower <laughs> <laughs> she really doesn't need a win right now she, yeah so let's let's just fuck over everyone else don't worry about it yeah so like while you're doing this you're you're kind of telling the story of this person who has theoretically good in, in uh intentions but like she at a very core subconscious level is being so greedy here yeah because she's uh like it, it's telling the story of someone who is not even for a second entertaining the idea of like okay should i actually have this power right now i'm not even the secretary general i'm just stepping in for him should I right. really have this? Um, because, like, while she does that, um, she is fucking over the moon. <laughs> she Like, the moon doesn't get water. Uh, fucking over the space ports. They're going to uh, become much worse and, and, like, a much worse place to conduct business and live. Um, she's actually making bad calls with the uh, the Martian people. Because, like, so we, we should talk about the Martian uh ship as well because the whole time this uh this naval officer uh guy Crusco Crusco he's calling in and he's like I really think they're up to no good uh and you can find this like dirt on Crusco did you find the dirt yes I did yeah you can find the dirt on Crusco where you're like oh okay if I mention that I know this about his past um I'll, I'll be able to control him a little bit so you do that and he's like, okay, I don't think we made the right call here today, but uh, I'm listening to you. By the end of the episode, it turns out there actually was a significant amount of checkable Martian aggression that leads Ooh. to the death of a, uh, or to the explosion of a space station on which was her son. And her son well, dies. Well, you know, how, how are we to know? Innocent mistake. Well, it's an innocent mistake, but, like, she was wrong about if Mars was going to be aggressive. She has made the quality of life on the moon worse. She's right. made the quality of life in these spaceports worse. She's concentrated more power within a smaller group of people. She's uh, trivialized the entire security system in the Secretary General's palace. She's done, like, constant and only bad things. Uh, if you yeah. look at the chessboard, she's going to lose. <laughs> like, she's not going to win that game of chess. You you can keep... Um, you, you can keep your... I forget his name. Is it Arvel? Ar uh, all... Yeah, I, I don't remember it. Uh, the chess... Arjun? Ar Arjun. Is that right? A-R-J-U-N. Okay. Uh, you can keep Arjun in check, and I got an uh, achievement for it, but... Like, you can't actually win the game. Right. I I think it, it's all swirling around this whole idea of, like, 
why do you think you're good at this? <laughs> no, you you made so many errors of catastrophic implications in the span of just an hour. And you were thinking about it very, uh, very casually the whole time. Like, this right. is going to affect a lot of people. Uh, well, you know, mm-hmm. I tried my best. Yeah, I mean, that, that's, uh, that should that's count the for idea, something, right? right? Like, you're trying your best, but, like, it's the framing of what should you actually be trying? Because, um, the way that this episode gives you choices. The choices are all about, like, approach. They're not actually about what you should do. Right. Yeah, because, uh, like, it, it's canon within the story that Officer Rala tells this naval officer not to attack. But we can either um, tell him not to attack nicely and diplomatically, or we can be aggressive about it and say, no, don't be a shithead. Uh, <laughs> just don't attack. Right. And, and, and that's that's the way... To go about all of these things. We can't choose where she's going to put the pieces on the chessboard. But we can say if we want her to be more uh, offensive or defensive. Right, yeah. Yeah. Um, eventually, she wins the vote. You can't lose it. You have to just, like, redo it if you lose it the first time, apparently. Pretty cool. <laughs> Pretty cool. <laughs> so dismissive it's <laughs> pretty cool uh, yeah i mean yeah. i i get it but it just feels like it goes against what you expect from a telltale game i guess it is very much a different kind of thing but i yeah just given what they do in the main series of the expanse trying yeah. for that slightly more traditional telltale vibe i didn't really love that so <laughs> i'm glad they're trying a different thing it's it's a it's right. a cool different one off. I don't know. I don't know if I don't know if I'd say it's cool. I'm it saying it's cool. That's my and, one. And... I'm I'm having that okay. opinion. I'm putting it down. It's my okay. opinion. I'm doing it. I, I I just don't know if I would say it's cool to uh, fail something and then a Telltale game just tells you no, just do it again. Yeah, no, just, that that's true. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess this is this is a more. This is even more like pressed up against the main story of the Expanse than right. than the Drummer stuff was because Drummer was at least like not there for the first season of the show. Um, yeah, Avasarala is there for the first season of the show. She's right up there in the like for one of the first few people you meet. Uh, so this this is really cutting it close with like where you can consider this in the timeline. Yeah, you have you have even less wiggle room to play around with it. Yeah, um, which is fine. I get it. I understand. I I do think it's it's lame that you that it it just it, no it, it like that you have to get the vote. And, no, and I totally it, agree. Like if they couldn't, but I get it. I I understand why they have to. They're stuck in that frame. I think I think you're right. Like I think that if. You want to make a game about choices, but then you're you're like hamstrung about how much the player can affect the future. Yeah, maybe you've picked a bad place to put the story. Maybe that's just like a bad place yeah. to do that. Didn't didn't we have another game like that where like the characters we were playing as just couldn't be? A, a, was it Game of Thrones where we kind of talked about this? Like it. I, I guess to a less, lesser extent, but it, it's something where because the series is just so hard locked, you really can't you you really can't play around outside of those parameters that much. Yeah, we talked about characters. it a bit with Game of Thrones. We talked about it again with um, or or before that with The Wolf Among Us and Fables, um, right. how it's a prequel. Like, yeah, I I just don't think prequels are, are great places to put these series uh yeah like i want to be able to see massive impact yeah exactly i i feel like i'm just not a huge fan of prequels in general for that exact reason like sometimes they can be interesting but like if, if you're just locked into knowing what's gonna happen and it it's constrained by those it does make it just less interesting to me yeah i i think a prequel should be used to like um solve a mystery or or entertain 
uh, a mystery of some sort. Um, yeah. Like, like um, I mean, maybe this is a really bad example because <laughs> they, they didn't turn out how people wanted them to. But like with the Star Wars prequels, uh, the, the mystery there was like, how could someone like Anakin Skywalker be Darth Vader? And that was trying to be the, the, the solve of that mystery. Like, I, I get how you could do that. And, and then in this, it's like, if if Drummer can never die, if Christian Avis Rala can never be voted off, um, I mean, that really does kind of, that does force the story quite significantly. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not really like solving a mystery. Exactly. Like, what do, what do you really get out of it? I, I, I don't think this was, like, awful or anything, but... Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I don't know what else I could say other than I, I just wasn't that into it. Uh, there's a thing... There's a bunch of little toys on her desk. You can uh, play with some Newton balls or... Yeah, yeah, the uh, clackers. Yeah, you know, clacker balls. Uh, you've got a spinny thing it was described as a kinetic <laughs> spinner i've I've never i don't think i've actually touched one of those in real life it's yeah it, it's just a spinny thing it's just like a top in a tube right yeah and you, and you get a super fun slide puzzle yeah uh what do you think of the slide puzzle well i don't know if i've brought it up here on the show before but i really love slide puzzles i don't are you sarcastic Yes, I do not like them. As soon as I as soon as I saw it, I was like, "Oh no!" Yeah, I think it's it's not even it's not even that hard. I just don't have yeah. a good time with them. Someone's got to love them. Yeah, someone out there. I mean, they keep doing them. Someone like high up in the shadow organization that runs all AAA video game companies, uh, <laughs> way higher than where I'm at, is just like way into slide puzzles. We have to make these two pieces connect. Once you're once you're given squares, you do want to slide <laughs> them though. I kind of get it. I like. <laughs> there's things that. Oh man, you're doing poorly right now. Are you okay? Who? Who me? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just have some phlegm in my throat. Is all. Let me take a swig of water. Yeah. Are you? I just. Uh, I'm. I'm just worried about my good friend. <laughs> what uh, a good chug. I heard You like that? I heard the swallow. There was a lot going on in that swallow. My mom says I swallow loud. You did that time. <laughs> I can't tell you about any other time in your life, but that one for sure. Oh, there'll be plenty of swallows in the future. Um So the whole time you're doing all this stuff, we, we should probably just go back to the episode, I guess. The whole time you're doing all this stuff, you're uh, you have an assistant Nishan, who isn't physically there. No one can be there with you, uh, but it's just his face on a drone. That's He's, like, fun. I, I like I like yeah. when a character's a face on a drone, like uh, Doctor Carol in Perfect Dark. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, he's Nishan is my Discord profile picture right now. Um. But just that's, the that's drone good. part. Just the drone. The important part. Uh, and he's just, uh, he's like a really friendly guy. He's just got a good attitude about things. Yeah, I, I think he makes a good contrast with uh, yeah. Christian. Yeah, she's very cold. She's uh, very cold, stoic. Yeah. Very professional. Mm-hmm. She's probably like the exact right kind of person you would want for this job. Uh, right. Despite the fact that I think the the underlying subtext to this episode is that she is not good at this and is making greedy bad calls all over the place. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I I wanted to help everyone. Yeah, but you can't, you know. Uh if if yeah. you want to stay in power, you can't give the moon drinking water <laughs> and you can't Yeah, sorry give uh the spaceports the regulation they need to be better places for for really bad reasons too just because one person's like nah they shouldn't have drinking water <laughs> yeah yeah i feel like with that person you would have been like okay wait i'm gonna call you back on that actually <laughs> like you yeah, just you, don't want them to have it you Can just I don't want them to have you? water yeah you you don't want them to have water because this other person who does want water is just gonna be a, a little annoying about it 
Un- unreal. That, that's that's a bad call. <laughs> yeah, I I feel like um, I don't envy the writers in that position uh, right. of this episode because they're like, okay, well, one person wants to raise taxes because of uh, wealth equality. One person wants to lower taxes because. Uh, you know, taxes are just taking a, a lot of money from the people. I get this dichotomy. The deregulation of spaceports, regulation of spaceports. Sure, I you know, you could see, like, them getting benefits from either way on that. No, Water Tower is pretty hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> pretty hard to write, like, a convincing character. I feel like they probably did the best <laughs> job they could have done with it. It's It's entertaining. It makes me laugh. Yeah, you're just not going to make a lot of friends in politics. If yeah. you make an enemy out of clean drinking water. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like the the pros would have outweighed the cons if it came to giving them drinking water. Um, I could I could deal with someone being annoying for like a couple days. So maybe just don't talk to them. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe that person. I would say like put out a press release that says we're not doing it. And then the next day, put out another one that says, actually, we're doing it. And then that'll be after the vote. Right. But I guess you'll really upset that one person. But you're already upsetting yeah. all these other people. So, like... Yeah, who cares? Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So, I am I feel like I'm, I may be reaching the end of, of my, my dust in time with this episode. Uh, so, do we have anything else we want to talk about? Oh, well, there's a the whole last part. The, the part that I actually liked in the episode, after the votes, where there's another uh, security alarm. Oh, well, that was before the 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 votes, I think. No, it was... It, oh, no, well, it was after you put in your say on what to do. It, it your was policy before, changes, right. Yeah. yeah, it was before the votes, but it, it was after you made your calls. Yeah, so you do that, and then the uh, security threat to the building um, escalates in some way. And Private Sharp, who is the uh, <laughs> the only other person we see in person during this whole episode, um, who's been standing outside the door the whole time, he busts in, and he grabs you by the arm, and he takes you into the, the secret, deeper bunker within the bunker. <laughs> um, to... to I guess just write it out while you're in there. Right, yeah. He's like, look, I have my orders. You just gotta be in here now, is the thing. Yeah, I actually kind of didn't like this part. Oh, really? I liked it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, not, yeah. not, not that you really even do anything. I just uh, thought it was fun. I thought Private Sharp was funny. Private Sharp was fun. I liked him. Uh, yeah, so like the way you get out of this room is you try to use some incense that's burning on the smoke alarm, but you're not, like, tall enough. And uh, <laughs> then the Nishan Relatable. drone busts through the vents, and <laughs> he just gets to you, and then you're like, okay, what's the plan? And he's like, I don't know, I was just trying uh, to get to shit. you. <laughs> this, this was the extent of my plan. Uh, <laughs> which is pretty funny. Uh, and then yeah. they, they use the... Uh, the drones, like, fans that it uses to hover to blow the smoke onto the alarm. Um, and that yeah. lets her out of the room. Yeah, so here, here's my stance on it. it. What you actually do is not as interesting as what you do in the first half. But I just thought that first half was just so dry. So I really don't care that much about what's going on. And this part where you escape, you really just do the one thing. Like the one uh, puzzle in quotes. Uh, mm-hmm. But you have Nishan breaking through and it's very funny. You have Private Sharp who's funny. Uh, it, I, I, I'm just more into what's happening because I, I I like... I, I'm getting some laughs out of these characters. Uh, I'm, I'm ha- just having a, a, a better time. A more fun time than I am doing all this other stuff. Yeah. No, I mean that's true. You are like yeah. that's even if even if gameplay wise it's nothing it's it's very nothing. Well, it wasn't so much about gameplay for me is why I didn't like it because like there, there's a lot of little puzzles like that in the main section as well. Um, right. But it was I I just felt like there was a lot going on with the uh, the main room you were in and and 
what they were kind of doing with forcing the story to all take place in one room, I thought was very interesting. Uh, right. And, and not boring. <laughs> but, but I can see how that is a fine line and very taste dependent. Uh, yeah. So, like, for, for them to kind of throw away the premise that it was all happening in one room because we're going to a different room for that one part um, felt to me like a little bit of, like, well, okay, you know, it it was quite dry, but, like, you had a point in doing it this way. So let's right. It kind of goes against with the premise. Yeah, it, it goes against the pre- premise for sure. Um, I get that. Yeah, like, like here's how much politicking can be done in just one room. Uh, that was the kind of exciting, interesting angle of what they were doing here. And, yeah, I, uh, I, I, yeah. We're, we're just coming at it from different sides on what we think is uh, interesting. Because I... I don't care about politicking. I like seeing these characters interact and be fun. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, okay. Now that you've had this episode you don't like, how do you feel about um, <laughs> its addition onto this game series you didn't like? Uh, uh, I mean, I guess I didn't like it. <laughs> yeah, I guess. It no, I thought, it, I, I, thought it, I think it's a fine little bonus thing. I don't think it like I I don't think having it like lowers the quality of the series more like I don't dislike the expanse as a whole more because of this especially since it was just like a little uh bonus thing that was free for some of us. Yeah, I think it's my favorite episode in the expanse. Interested. See, that's interesting. That part I think is very interesting. I yeah, I mean I kind of feel like it's the only one that was doing something that really succeeded at it. I get so, you. In the, in that I way, you. I guess that's a pretty uncharitable compliment, but Yeah. I I I guess for me it's just I I just don't care for what it was they were trying to do. I'm I'm just not that interested in it. But yeah, I I get where you're coming from. Yeah. Uh So yeah, you're about to leave and then you find out that there was a explosion on the satellite and your son died and uh and then that's the game that's the yeah. episode what a downer pretty downer pretty downer um uh, but you know she was doing bad stuff in that room so yeah she she would have she lost that chess yeah she did a and bunch. this is her punishment <laughs> she like cut water off to a, a bunch of people on the moon and then she was like i'm gonna fix myself a drink i deserve a break after that that, that was tough i did a good job here today yeah, I love that within the span of what seems like a couple hours, maybe, she's like, I deserve a break. And she pours herself <laughs> drinks twice <laughs> and, like, meditates three times. Yeah, that's a lot of meditation. <laughs> it's a lot and of drinks. It's a lot of, de- I mean, I, I, as someone who works from home, I can relate to the idea of, like, Whew, that was a tough five minutes. I gotta, gotta go to walk to another part of my apartment. I am done for the day. <laughs> yeah, it, you know, there's a lot of, there's just a lot of working from home in there in this episode. Uh, right. Speaks to the, the feeling of working from a very confined environment. I wonder if this was planned out from like earlier in the COVID days, maybe. Oh, interesting. Yeah. You, you know what? Some, I'll, like I'll give her a, this. Oh yeah, go for it. It it was it, it was just a very, a very small amount of time, but that was a lot of uh, heavy, stressful shit she was dealing with. If if it were me and I had to deal with all this shit and I had to call like five people and make all these decisions, it, I I would probably pour myself a drink. That makes sense. Yeah, that makes yeah, sense. I'd be do. like, you know what? This was a tough hour. Yeah, would you pour yourself two drinks and meditate three times in that one hour? Uh, possibly. It, it it depends. I, I would probably just want to do, like, anything else. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, she's looking out the windows this whole time, by the way, and the windows are, like, monitors. They're just fake windows of what looks... What would look nice to be outside, but she's actually deep underground. Right. Um, when the power goes out, you see, like, all the pipes and stuff. Yeah, and what's wild to me is, like, when the power comes back on and she can actually... Uh, not see out the windows anymore and she can see just the fake shit she's like oh nice thank god oh thank she, god I she get wants to, see to be outside. deceived with the windows i guess that's 
understandable. I'd prefer that over seeing a bunch of red pipes. I think I wouldn't. I think knowing that it's just um, like the equivalent of watching the Yuletide log burn on <laughs> Christmas, uh, it it like on TV, that just is... That's just a bummer. I don't want to... If I right. know I, it's fake, I'd rather just see what it is. Right. I, I get that. But, you know, if, if it looks nice, I'd still rather look at something nice even if I know it's fake. You think so? I think so. I mean, it's 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 like when I put posters up in my room. I like looking at nice things. Yeah, but are you trying to convince yourself that's real or, like, that you're there? I wouldn't be convinced it's real, but I'd just be like, oh, that's a nice-looking little scenery i enjoy looking at that even if it's not real um yeah okay i get that i i feel like within this specific scenario she's like oh i'm outside <laughs> like <laughs> she, she's like trying that was to close con- uh create an environment where she feels outside more right uh and that that to me feels different than like i mean i have art on my walls too but uh i i don't I'm not trying to trick myself into thinking it's happening. <laughs> I have a poster. I have a Sam and Max poster on my wall. They are really here in my room hanging out with me. That's true. Yeah. Should we have left... our segments before yeah, you tell I me think more so. about your Sam and Max poster? I think it's time. Okay. Uh, golden moment. Uh, I like the whole escape part. Like, I, I already talked about it during the episode, but... Rest of the episode just didn't do much for me. And here I was at least like, well, now I'm interacting with some characters I can see. I'm getting some chuckles here and there. I like uh, the, uh, I like that. I like that for you. Thank you. Yeah. I like the, what about the, yours? Uh, the sharp moment and the Nishan moments. Yeah. Those, those are fun. Uh, yeah. mine is the vote. I, I think like figuring out, Talking to all the voters and then figuring out what to uh, do the policy based on that, how to do the policy based on that, is yeah. um, probably the most interesting thing the player actually does throughout yeah, the Yeah, I mean, that, that's, like, that's like the big puzzle of the episode, I would say. That's, that, that, that's kind of the, the meatiest section of it. Yeah, but like even just the, uh, the phone call interviews to get that information I thought were really strong. Right. Uh, yeah, th- that was just a, a fun thing. I get you. I get you. Tis my Who's your... golden mama. Well, who tis your weekly guy? Uh, it's Nishan. That's a good pick. I almost said Nishan. But is it sharp? It's sharp. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Love that guy. Uh, sharp was told multiple times in my version of the game, at least, based on my choices. To not call me ma'am, to call me undersecretary, because I'm like the undersecretary of the world. Stop calling me ma'am. And Oh, I don't he, think I got that. And he, well, I was mad at him. Uh, so oh, I, I okay. Did, one time I was mad at him. I was normally cordial. Um, and <laughs> based on uh, based on that, he stopped calling me ma'am exactly one time. And then after <laughs> that, he called me ma'am forever. And I think you know what you can't be my weekly guy if you if you uh, listen to, listen to me so poorly. You're not following directions. No, he was not. Uh, but yeah, Sharp was a was a fun guy. He he's clearly like way in over his head. This is yeah, way I'm, I'm higher. I'm just following orders. This is like way higher security detail than he's ever had to do before. Yeah, he he easily gets tricked into into just letting her out and and getting trapped in the room uh and then once the call is done uh she has him promoted yeah yeah that's uh, fun and he's just like what what yeah she has him promoted because if she didn't (laughs) it would be learned that she locked him in a in the deep bunker right while she was escaping uh which would have looked quite bad right yeah yeah uh he, he's just a fun guy he, I, I like that choice uh choice yeah cuts. but i but i i almost agreed with you i i was this close to saying nishan because i just like his yeah. little yeah yeah rescue N- attempt Nishan's flying some... in as a drone he's helpful he's and he's just a sunny guy he's a sunny yeah guy. 
And then and then he's he, he doesn't know what to do going forward. You're just like, well, you tried and that's what counts, Nishan. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, as you're leaving the bunker near the end of the episode, uh, you can like examine the Nishan drone again. And she goes, if he's smart, he'll have my job really soon. Uh, which is kind of wild because like, I don't know if you really go from assistant to a politician to being a politician that often is that a thing that happens yeah uh i don't know that pipeline also, doesn't uh, seem real also that's a strange thing to say when you were just fighting so hard to keep your job yeah well i i think she's thinking that she'll just be the secretary general so he'll right. be he'll he can be an undersecretary yeah uh and then he she him. follows it up with if he's even smarter than that, though, he will refuse it. Um, oh, she's because she's thinking she had such a hard day. <laughs> she, yeah, she had such a rough one with her. Uh, she had to have so many drinks. Yeah, all of her meditation. Uh, I like when she said, uh, "I kind of like you better as this drone." I feel like uh, when we meet in person, it'll I'll, I'll be a, I'll be disappointed. Yeah. <laughs> Um, despite the fact that I think it's stated, she's seen him a lot in person. Right. <laughs> so it's not like a first impression. It's just like, I like you better this way. You should just be this way. You should just be a drone. Um, yeah. Choice cut. There weren't a lot of big choices in this episode. Uh, no. I picked whether or not to accept your son's girlfriend. That's a good one. Yeah, that's... Yeah, I, that's I just thought one. that was... A- that that was a nice little. Uh, I, I I thought it was uh, just nice to be able to be like, okay, well, is she like so totally against this, or can you show a little uh, a, a little regret at your harsh words you said? And it, it's not a big choice, but you know, I th- I thought it was uh, one of the more humanizing moments, something outside of all all of the uh, politics shit. Yeah, especially because you find out from a letter from your daughter, who is not as pivotal to the episode, from her, she says, like, you haven't actually spoken in person with your son in years. And this is how you break the ice, Uh, which is is an interesting recontextualization, because, like, at that point, you've already spoken to him, and it was quite rude in the way that she responded. You're like, I... I now I feel bad retroactively for being a rude person. Yeah, it was weird. If I had known the context, game. if I had known the context, maybe I would have been less rude. It was weird for a Telltale game, like that first message that you send out, because the 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 player input is just to press the reply button. You can choose to reply to your son, right? And then you're just watching this character who is ostensibly you <sighs> say like the craziest shit. <laughs> <laughs> that you did not choose for her to say at all. You just chose for her to reply. Uh, but, like, I think it establishes Christian Avasarala as a very independent kind of protagonist. Where yeah. the player is going to tell her what happens, but she's like, okay, and then I'll do it. <laughs> and then I'll, <laughs> I'll like, take care of I'll it. I'll take it from here. Yeah. Um, my choice cut was choosing to meditate. Um Okay. Because uh, when you sit down at the prayer rug or yoga mat, like, I I don't really know what it is. It might be a prayer rug. Uh, You're given the option to either pray or silently meditate. And for me, I didn't, I, this was like a very subtle way to like contextualize the character of Avasarala, I think. Yeah, um, I was thinking yeah. exactly the same. I chose to meditate all three times uh, rather than pray. I Yeah, that's what I did too. I, I just meditated in silence. And I think part of that is just because I as a person am not religious, so I wouldn't have prayed. I would have meditated. But also part of that is like, are we trying, are we looking for help when we're sitting down for those moments? Like help picking the things that she needs to pick or are we meditating because we know we have the ability to get through these things and are just searching within ourselves for the answer i think that's a a, a very subtle but deliberate distinction uh for 
her as a character. Uh, yeah, and, and for the yeah, player to get I to have choose the exact those same is, is interesting. Yeah, good pick. Y- y- you know what? I I I think that's. I I don't want to just steal yours. I'm I'm gonna stand by mine. You, know, but you I had do a good agree. one. You had a, I liked yours. Yeah, I well I I think yours was very good as well. Okay, well thank you. Dustin. We made some good picks. We this you know what we're good at the podcast. Let's say yeah. It. You know what? I think we finally got this down. Don't even worry about how many times we both sniffled into the microphone this episode. Yeah, you know what? This might be the best episode now that I think about it. I think it's the best episode of the podcast coming in clean under an hour. Yeah, and I don't <laughs> think I don't think it I don't think it's going to be topped. Uh well, I I hope it's at least close because we have some more <laughs> to do. Uh, we will be back next week where we return to Guardians of the Galaxy, the Telltale series. Uh, we're now, I don't think we have anything else that could possibly take us unawares like this. I don't think so. I'd be very shocked if there was. Yeah, it's just, it's four more Guardians, five more Minecraft, five more Batman, four more Walking Dead. Maybe we then do a wolf. Hector. <laughs> maybe I, on the on the fence about doing hector i'd, I'd be down for it but uh you, we'll we'll see where things go we'll see how the winds blow maybe we do this time it's virtual yeah it, it'll depend i'd like to do it this time it's virtual we're still feeling it out okay uh good to know and uh listeners we love you yeah hey you know what nice hair you've been having a hard week yeah, but don't worry. We're going to tuck you in. We're going to get you some cookies, get you some hot cocoa, read you a nice little story, and then you can just drift off. The thing about having a bad time in your life is that you'll have more life unless you die. And if you're still alive, you're in a position where you have to endure the badness. But it means that you will continue living until things can possibly change. So I believe in you. And have a great summer. Have a great Summer.